very first webinar brought to you by Dig Digital Smile Center. Before we proceed to the webinar, I would like to invite Dr. Rajiv Chu, the President of Indian Dental Association, to speak a few words. Thank you, Dr. Sasha. Uh, and on behalf of Indian Dental Association, I welcome you all to this uh, webinar on digital dental industry. Uh, you all are aware of the uh, the, the role of digital dentistry in the coming generations. The digital dentistry is improving our uh, applications well with the very precision and uh, uh, very less invasive, less stressful procedures. And it has an enormous impact on patients' health and quality of life. And Indian Dental Association is committed to promote the latest and best practices in the dental profession. So in this respect, we have already had a digital dental conference earlier and we are planning the next one. Besides that, in the next month, we are also starting a global conclave on aesthetic dentistry, perio, prosthetics, lasers, and endodontics. I invite you all for this uh, event, which is to be hosted in uh, Mumbai in Geo Center on January 13 and 14, and come and enjoy this uh, aspect of dentistry as well. So I welcome you all to this webinar and we'll be having these series of webinars in the coming years uh, in future too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Rajiv. Now I would request Dr. Ashok Doble, the Honorable Secretary General of IDA to speak a few words. Very good afternoon to all of you. I am extremely happy. And today is the first webinar series we are, of the series we are going to start on digital smile from the Digital Smile Center. Regards to that, Dr. Rajiv Chu has already mentioned to all of you. We are planning to have we are having going to have global dental conclave on 13, 14 January, specially focused on endodontics, periodontics, prosthetic dentistry, and laser. And now our focus is going to remain on how we can bring all such specialties in the general dentistry. And another, our, our annual conference, it is getting planned on 2nd, 3rd of February at Kolkata. So I would like to request all of you, please join this event. And every month, this webinar is going to take place and from the Digital Smile Center. And uh, towards the end of this, our presentation, our staff, Dr. Sasha, she will give the presentation how Digital Smile Center we are going to initiate in the country that will bring big opportunities, enormous opportunities for the, all the dental clinics in the country. And we are going to promote Digital Smile Center, how you can join and what are the benefits of the Digital Smile Center that can be explained by the staff. So thank you. Thank you for joining this webinar. Thank you very much. Jai Hind, Jai ID. Thank you so much, Dr. Ashok Dogle. Now, as you all know, our topic for today is digital workflow in tooth supported full mouth reconstruction cases by Dr. Mohis Kakiari. I'm sure most of you already know him or have heard of him speak before. But for any one of you who might not know him yet, here's a small introduction. Professor Dr. Mohis Kakiani is an MDS in prosthodontics and maintains a private practice in Bandra, Mumbai called Smile Masters and Jaw Joint Matters since 2006. With special attention towards fixed prosthetics, functional smile designing, full mouth reconstructions and TMJ pain management. He is a professor at Karnavati School of Dentistry, Ahmedabad, and is a fellow of ICOI, PFA, and ICD, and has a postgraduate diploma in aesthetics and cosmetic dentistry from State University of Buffalo, New York, USA. He has recently been bestowed as a fellow of TMD, Orofacial Pain and Dental Sleep Medicine by Roseman University, Nevada, USA. He is author of the highly acclaimed books titled Clinical Fixed Prosthodontics, Starter and Master Volume, for which 
He has been bestowed with multiple awards. He is the founder chairman of the Academy of Digital Dentistry and the co-founder of MIK Dental with seven dental patents registered under his name. He is a key opinion leader with companies like 3M, Colgate, Abbott, Medicep, IPCA Pharmaceuticals, and Hugh Freddy. He has to his credit several papers and publications at various conferences in India and overseas and is a highly acclaimed speaker for his clinically relevant presentations. He has over 350 keynote podium lectures at various national, state and international conferences and dental colleges and is the director of MIK Education under which banner he actively conducts CD courses on crown and bridge dentistry, ceramic laminates, occlusion, full mouth reconstructions and rehabilitations and TMJ disorders. So without any further ado, I now over to Dr. Morris. All right, thank you so very much, Shivani, for that lovely welcome. Very, very, very good afternoon to all the viewers out there. Namaste. Uh, I have a feeling that you guys are either at home or about to leave your practice or are probably sitting with a plate ready to eat. And here I am going to give you food for thought. All right, it gives me immense pleasure, friends, to know that uh, for this first webinar, of the series, we have more than 3,000 registered delegates. That is astounding. Thank you. Thank you. Great job to the Indian Dental Association for having brought in all of us together on this platform. And guess where I am right now? I am making this presentation, friends, from the IDA head office, which is in Prabha Devi of Mumbai. If you have been here, you know of how amazing this facility is. If you never have come here before, this is something which should be on your bucket list. If you want to know how good we are in terms of the Indian Dental Association, how proud we are as dentists to be a part of it, you have to come to this center and see how magnanimous it is. The facilities here, I mean, it is absolutely mind boggling. All right. So it gives me immense pleasure to be making this presentation to all of you all from the head office. Okay. Very quickly, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share screen and, of course, jump into my presentation. All right, here we go. Um, guys, can you confirm if the session is live? Yes, they're able to see my screen. Right. Fantastic. Thank you so, so, so very much. All right. So friends, the topic for the quick webinar today is digital protocols in tooth supported full mouth reconstructions. I'm going to start with a quote because these quotes I love and are also inspiring. And it is beautifully said, there is nothing permanent except change. And when it comes to the topic of change, I want to go back into time. Tell me if there's a deja vu moment when you see this. I remember my youthful days when we used to pick up that dial and go, toing, go back, goes back, toing, and then we keep doing that. And to us, that was amazing because I am sitting here, a friend of mine is in a different state or a different city and wirelessly I can collect with them. How brilliant. As a child, it fascinated me only to realize that things could become even smaller and even better. And this is one of those communicators then then followed. This meant that I am not connected with a wire and I can hold this and move around at home wherever I am, doing whatever I want to. Then came this tool right here. This is the snake world. And I have a feeling a lot of us sitting out there have experienced this at some point. This is the Nokia 3310. But uh, those are fond memories. Uske baad ek door aaya. And, and I remember fighting for my next gadget. And the fight was for the double six double zero. Q uska beach ka jo joystick tha na, pyar ho gaya tha main. And this is how things evolved, things changed. And then suddenly there was a phase where everything was about folding phones. Jo khulte the. Aur hab hum ja rahe hai, ulta, we're talking about folds that actually collapse down. We're talking about data protection. We're talking about modernization. Everything now 
is becoming more and more and more digital. This is the evolution. This is change. And I love to say this, friends. Digitalization and modernization go hand in hand. So why should we in dentistry be left behind? Why? Which is the reason why my topic for today is going to be modern day dentistry. And as I address this topic, I want to tell you of how we used to do dentistry, which was the analog workflow and how we do dentistry today, today which is digitally influenced. I like to think of this as Kalki dentistry and Aane Wale Kalki dentistry. My dad beautifully tells me, Beta, don't be the first to take up something. Don't be the last to give up something. And I think digitalization is going through that beautiful phase where there have been stalwarts who've brought in this to us. We don't want to be the last to uptake it because we don't want to be the last in the race. So this is the time where we should also jump onto the digital bandwagon. And here I am specifically talking about digitalization from one of the most complex topics of fixed prosthetic dentistry, which is a tooth supported full mouth reconstruction. Okay. To add perspective to this, I will first give you guys steps. Now, remember, whenever we do a full mouth reconstruction, it's not like patient aya, bithaya, dat kat kia, gar dao. Nahi. There has to be first the planning phase and then subsequently comes the actual execution phase. So I'm going to list 10 steps that I follow in a sequence with respect to my treatment planning, 10 steps with respect to my treatment execution. Wherever you are, go ahead and take a screenshot of this slide because it will really help you. Follow these individual steps and you will not go wrong. But remember one thing. Agar screenshot liya hai, photo liya hai, to share karna to banta hai. Or agar share kiya to tag karna banta hai. Kise tag karoge? Hame karoge. Indian Dental Association head office ko karoge. Choti si request hai. Okay. Now, ye 20 cheeza hamne list kar di hai. Where does digitalization come into all of this? If you look at these 20 steps right now, they're all in a black font. Whatever changes into, into a blue font is digitally influenced. So here's the magic. From the treatment planning phase, accepting the step of actually making a putty index. Because wo computer nahi kar sakta humare liye. Every other step is digitally influenced. I'm not saying is completely digital. We are yet the drivers. We are yet the people who are controlling the ship. But remember, it is influenced and improvised upon by digital technology. When I talk about treatment execution, Cementation, usme kuch bhi digital nahi hai. Abhi bhi cements wohi use karna hai humne. But every other step, friends, is digitally influenced. So you, you can understand here, kitna kuch badal chuka hai dentistry mein. So much of work that we used to do in the analog protocols with plaster, with stone, with cast, with mountings, with articulator can be to a great extent digitally influenced. Hold that thought here. Am I telling you, you wo sub materials ki zarurat nahi hai? Nahi. Zarurat hai. All those materials still hold true. We are not 100% digital as yet. And that is something that I will share during this presentation. Saying, I am not here to talk to you about a full mouth reconstruction that will be done A to Z completely digital. Not possible yet. But remember, we're in the age of advancements. Maybe in the future, we could go 100% digital. At this point of time, we're going to mix analog and digital protocols together so that we can achieve a predictable end result and one which is in our patient's best interest. If we talk about digital influence, ki baat karte hai, why should I, as a dentist, take up the digitally influenced protocols? I'm very happy with my analog. Lekin agar maine adrak chakha nahi hai, to mujhe adrak ka swad pata nahi hai. So here I am giving you an understanding of why is this modern day digitally influenced dentistry better than our analog. Let me first start with talking about better planning. How often do you get patients in your practice who are aesthetically very finicky? It was like, nee, ye daat to aisa hona chahiye, ye aisa hai, ye waisa hai, wo taisa hai. Are bhai, kaun si manus gadi thi jab ye patient meri practice mein aaya? I don't want to create a scenario like that, which is why today, 
with the digitally influenced world, if you look closely at these two scans that I have created with the digital planning that has been done on a software, we have provided this patient with two different designs of upper anterior teeth. Posteriors are the exact same. Lower anteriors are the exact same. But the major domain of aesthetics lies with the upper centrals, laterals, and the canine. So if you look closely at both of these designs, the design that you see on the left of your screen is something that has a flattened incisal edge. But the one on the right side has a more curved incisal edge. So what do I do now? I make a putty index and I give the patient a test drive. What is a test drive? It's not just a two-dimensional representation, but it is actually saying, up feel karo. Mehsus karo. Aapke face pe ab jab baat karte ho, tab ye kaisa lagta hai. And then simply ask the patient, which one of these two do you like the more? Do you like the one that has the flattened incisal edge more? And look at what I'm doing. I'm taking pictures here. Or do you like the one which has the more curved incisal edges? And then allow the patient to make this informed decision. You have gone that extra step for your patient. I am not talking about getting two wax ups done from the laboratory. That can be very cumbersome. Do models, do articulation, do bar wax up. But when it comes to digital, the best part is this can be done in a jiffy. It will take your technician not more than 10, 15 minutes to alter those incisal edges and give you a second design or a third design or a fourth design. This patient is like, Dr. Sahib, are you doing so much Absolutely. We are committed to giving you the best. And that is where digitally influenced dentistry helps because it helps me plan my cases better. Also, what does it do? It helps me convert my patients. So imagine a patient walks into your practice, young girl saying, I want to look better. Look better. I think you are looking absolutely fine. What is it that you don't like about your smile? And that's when the Pandora's box opens. Because when I look into her mouth, there is a major aesthetic issue. Look closely. Can you identify what that issue is? Majorly to do with the second quadrant, guys. Second quadrant, the lateral incisor is missing. Where's the canine? The canine is in the position of the lateral. So where is the actual canine? The canines move forward. So what's in the position of the canine? It's actually an over-retained deciduous canine. Now, the discussion with her is, you know what? We should do orthodontic treatment. We will extract the deciduous canine. We will move the canine into its proper position. We will place an implant in the position of the lateral incisor. We will give you the most amazing smile. You will look good. It will be the most physiologic, the most biological way of treating your case. And the patient says, Dr. Saab, do hafte mein meri shaadi hai. <laughs> What's your comeback now? This is where you have to step in and start planning the case from a different perspective. One that you can give the patient immediate gratification for. And how do I know what I have to do? Before I convince my patient for treatment, mujhe pata hona chahi ke, mujhe kya karna hai? and this is where 2D smile designing really helps. Because with the help of these digital simulators, in about 15-20 minutes, I can give the patient a perspective saying, this is you and this is where I can take you. This is something that I would be able to achieve. Do you like this? If the patient says yes, and provided it is within the realms of your work domain, go ahead and commit. You have converted that patient. But remember one thing. Always remember one thing. Whenever you put a simulation like this, please put a tagline with that simulation saying it is a digital simulation and final results may vary. <laughs> you don't want a scenario where your patient says, but photo me to bohat acha lag raha tha, ye thik nahi lag raha. So let this be uh, put out there to your patient before you start the treatment. And then with your patient's consent and approval to your work, go ahead and then execute in the best manner possible. And this will leave your patient smiling, extremely happy. And remember, a happy patient refers 10 more. An unhappy patient takes 100 away from your practice. So you'd rather commit to doing good dentistry with the help of digital technology. And remember, digitalization helps with patient conversion. If I'm talking about patient comfort, we've been 
हम इंप्रेशन ट्रे मुंह में डाले हैं इंप्रेशन मटीरियल मुंह में गया है पेशेंट स्टार्ट गैगिंग इट्स नॉट अनकॉमन इट्स नॉट अनकॉमन टू फाइंड टॉपिंग on our impressions especially if you are making one immediately after lunch which i'm guessing you are enjoying as we speak i'm going to share with you the findings of an article from 2018 which is by hadadi i hope i'm pronouncing the name correct and uh, this is where on a 0 to 100 scale uh, he identified that whenever you make a conventional impression 73% of the patients say that it was not comfortable which means the patient don't enjoy this procedure which means this is not a step the patient is looking forward to on the other hand when you use an intraoral scanner the advantage is no gag all right the tray is not placed into the mouth the material is not squeezing into the gingiva or running down their throat as much which is the reason why there are only 6 out of 100 which basically 6% of patients who undergo intraoral scanning saying that it wasn't the most comfortable do you appreciate going from a 73% down to just a 6% isn't that a tremendous improvement in patient comfort so remember that is another aspect with respect to the advantages of digital dentistry and the next one is something that was the game changer for me it's what got me on board and this is the fact that you get predictable results have you ever come across the scenario where you give the patient a test drive or you give the patient some temporary caps for anteriors and then get the final ones done from the laboratory and you fix them in and your patient tells you doctor sahab wo temporary daant ka shape mere ko zyada acha lag raha tha mere ko wo daant de sakte kya what do you do you're lost right because your patient's aesthetic profile or their aesthetic understanding was more for the temporary but your final is not the exact same q temporary core technician ne banaya final core technician bana raha there is no copy paste with the analog world but when i talk digital dentistry what happens here is it is designed by a computer i make a putty index i give the patient a test drive when i give the patient a test drive the patient says oh wow doc <laughs> i had no idea that this is possible the patients often get emotional guys when they see their own smile because there's a gratifying change in their smile they appreciate the work that you do but then very very important is when you give them something that appeals to them make sure your final is an exact copy and this is where the digital technology steps in because when you mill your restorations your final work is an exact replica it's a duplicate of your test drive or of your temporary so there is no are mere ko to ye acha laga mere ko to wo acha laga whatever corrections are needed do it within the provisional phase and then make sure the final is an exact copy and that is only and only possible with the help of digital copy paste technology and last but not the least of course it saves time right why does it save time because a whole lot of our time is spent in sending work to the laboratory खर्चा भी होता है वक्त भी लगता है घूम भी जाता है टूट भी जाता है अरे यार ये सब मच मच कब जाएगी एंड दैट फ्रेंड्स इज अगेन वे डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी कम्स इन व्हाई बिकॉज एवरीथिंग इज नाउ सेंट डिजिटली टू द लेबोरेटरी you don't have to send physically things across to them for small cases yes not however for full mouth reconstruction cases for full mouth you can be digitally influenced but you cannot be completely digital in your protocols and that is something that i would want to share on this platform here today and when i say saves time when i say saves time i wish right now i could see your expression because i am going to share with you a case of a full mouth reconstruction that start to end i completed in 5 days you heard me right if you had a jaw drop moment that's exactly what i anticipated 5 days full mouth reconstruction kisi picture mein sharukh khan ne bola tha 6 din ladki hai kyunki hum sunday ko kaam nahi karte all right we are talking about actually planning and executing the entire case in just 5 days and i will share with you that entire case in full protocol so these are friends that i'd like to list as the advantages of being digitally influenced in our practices now when we say digitally influenced kya kya aata hai isme 
what all comes under the domain of being digitally influenced? And I want all of you all to think like a systems engineer because that's how I think. How does a systems engineer work? First thinks about an input, then thinks about a process, then thinks about an output. It's very similar to how our computers work, right? There's an input, there's a processor, and then there is the output. So what is the input with respect to dentistry that is digitally influenced? Think about it. It's a part of every practice I guarantee to you. Why? Because we all have this. With our inputs, we have RVGs, we have OPGs. These are all digital. We have digital cameras with us. And of course, today, something that is at the at the grassroots level of every digitally modified practice, it's the presence of an intraoral scanner. If you're looking at your mobile phone, guess that mobile phone is also digital, which means you are digitally influenced if you're taking mobile phone pictures. If you're sharing your work on social media, you are already digitally influenced. It's not like you are Adam ke zamane ka ke bhai, hamare paas to abhi bhi ye nahi hai, wo nahi hai. I'm not saying that you are not digitally influenced. You already are. But there are steps or stratas that you can take in terms of strides forward to make yourself more and more digital as time moves ahead. So this is what there is with respect to input. When we talk about process, what comes under process? You could have a, have an in-house processing unit, which is nothing but your chair side system, which can scan and mill both of these together. Or what is something that is more commonly followed when it comes to digital protocol is let the lab make all the investments for digitals. Okay. And today there are so many different laboratories that have invested in intraoral scanners and they send their boys with the scanners to you. Why would you not want to take the advantage of such a technology available? All right. So go ahead and give it a try. I had reservations for the longest of times. And I'm telling you, I was a critic for the long. I'm not saying I'm not a critic right now. I still am. And you will see it through my presentation where I say you cannot do a full mouth case completely digital as yet, but slowly and steadily, I am being more and more convinced that the future is probably a hundred percent digital because there are so many brains that are working on it. There's so much money. There's so much R and D moving around in this direction. And I cannot be more happier that the Indian Dental Association is putting up something dedicated in this regard with their digital smile center. I'm so happy that I'm a part of it. And I take pride in that. Now, when we talk about output, what can digital technology do? It can make crowns and bridges for us. This could be PFMs. No. Remember, CAT CAM technology is all about monolithic restoration. So you cannot talk about PFMs or porcelain fused to zirconia. They can't make a coping and then the final ceramic has to be done manually. That cannot be done with the help of digital technology. So when we talk about crowns and bridges, we're talking about monolithic zirconia and we're talking about glass ceramic or lithium disilicate which is milled remember glass ceramic can also be pressed but it can also be milled so digitally influenced is milled which is where the copy paste aspect beautifully steps in but is it restricted to crown and bridge no you can also make these full mouth implant prosthesis and a lot of these prostheses need not be made after they can be made before you actually commit to your surgical protocols why? Because you can make cast partials. You can make these kind of implant stents. And today, digitalization has reached a point where everything in dentistry is digital, including our complete dentures. You heard me right. The future of complete dentures is 100% digital. And I know of colleagues in India who are currently working on this at great length. So look out for that. Everything that we do which is prosthetically driven, could be digitally influenced or digitally domained in the coming future. Okay. The entire thing together creates what is called as the digital ecosystem. And I know for a fact, I have gone through this phase where I felt very small. Why did I feel very small? Because everyone around me was talking about names. They were talking as if, yaar, ye company ka ye achha hai, wo company ka wo achha hai, ye company ne ye naya launch kiya, wo company ne wo naya launch kiya. Yaar, main to yaar, isi, kisi kone mein baitha ho, mujhe to koi idea nahi hai. I am scared. All right? I get intimidated when I see so many different terms, so many different companies. I'm like, yaar, chod na, ye sab kya hai. 
दिस इज वेयर अ लॉर्ड ऑफ क्लिनिशियन इंक्लूडिंग माई सेल्फ फॉर द लॉन्गेस्ट ऑफ टाइम सेट डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी बकवास है सर and here is me confessing at that point of time i was in this phase <laughs> it's it's reality anyone out there jo tumhe bolta hai na ki digital technology chi chi all that is waste it's just money making racket they are probably in this phase right now and i'm telling you this because i've gone through that phase and here i am putting myself out in its core truth form i am not here hiding or masking anything i am not here to promote any brand to you which is why i will not be talking about any individual product i am here talking about generic aspects of digital dentistry i strongly and strongly believe friends everyone in full mouth reconstructions always talks about diagnosis and treatment planning diagnosis and treatment planning and i'm like guys let's put a quick halt here in our thought process and rearrange these words diagnosis planning and treatment and it's the planning and treatment phase where digital technology steps in diagnosis is completely up to me no one can help me there diagnosis is my domain i have to identify what that patient needs what am i going to do how am i going to do but that's where the planning and the treatment can be digitally influenced and i love to say this everything that is planned well will end well so all that ends well also has to be planned well we do our uh, financial planning family planning clinic planning life planning similarly let's also do patient planning and in that regards friends instead of giving you before and after of multiple cases i am going to take a different route in this quick webinar where i go in depth into one case start to end so i will be showing you one case in full protocol so as to give you a perspective of how digitally influenced full mouth reconstructions can be planned and successfully treated this is fans where i introduce to you a term that i hope catches up i hope you guys can go out and talk to others when when you discuss with them saying i'm using the andy protocol to do a full mouth reconstruction so what is andy andy is no uncle andy is an acronym for analog and digital this according to me is the present i'm not saying the future according to me this is the present of full mouth reconstruction it is digitally influenced but it is also analog in its core crux there are certain steps that i can do digitally but i cannot give up as yet on my faithful semi adjustable articulator okay here goes let's meet our patient she is a 37 year old french woman who came into my practice and her first issue was not the smile she wasn't too concerned about her smile i was of course because i wanted her to look good all right so here is her smiling and she was like okay I, big deal i'm fine i don't mind this but what was her bigger concern all right now when i focus in i want you guys to appreciate that the gingival zenith don't match on the right and the left if you look closely towards the right side of her face which is the first quadrant i can see more pink right there is a whole lot more of gingival display on one side whilst the other side there ain't as much so what am i thinking here i'm thinking here i'm going to tell my patient that you know what dear we're going to lengthen this we're going to get the proportions correct we're going to get your zenith to match so that you look better and i'm taking these zoomed in pictures making her smile wide it's called the dushian smile like, yeah give me the widest smile possible crack a joke typically about um, uh, husband wife or boyfriend girlfriend that kind of gets that spark going all right and she's giving me this widest smile and i'm like you know what we could do this we could do that and she's like i'm not too much about my smile doc uh what can we do that is the easiest for me doesn't trouble me too much and we can do it fast i was like you know what wait <laughs> i'm going to try my best to convince you to get the right treatment done so what do i do i take help from digital 2d simulations okay what you are seeing here friends is the dts pro and i'm uh, and, the, and the reason i put it up there is because it is by an indian this is a system and a design that is 
by an Indian orthodontist. So I, I am very, very happy uh, putting this up and sharing it with the world saying you guys could also uh, look at DTS. Okay, now what do I do? This is where I'm showing her a simulation saying this is what you are. And with the 2D, I'm showing you this is what I can achieve. And, and if I were to lengthen the gingiva and, and get the perfect zenith, right? That's how you will look. But I also have to show her that if I don't lengthen, and if I don't get the zenith right, how will it look? So I'm showing her two pictures right then and there. This is the one where I don't lengthen. And I'm showing you the one where I lengthen. Doesn't the lengthen one look good? Yeah. And, and also see how smart I am. The one that is not lengthened, I've kept them short crowns, slightly bulky crowns and a darker shade. But the one that I want for her to choose, I'm giving nice, long, slender crowns, perfect according to her face, and also nice, white and bright. Any guesses what she chose? She still chose this one. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, you tried your level best. Now, this is where you don't force your patient to get dentistry done because you want good pictures to show on social media. Let's be realistic and not realistic. All right. She still said, you know what, doc, my primary purpose of coming to you is not my smile makeover, but my bite makeover. What's the problem with the bite? Okay. Let me share a quick history here, friends. For over eight months, for over eight months, this patient was on a permissive splint for her temporomandibular joint disorder. Let me show you a quick intraoral view and with the splint in my hand at the bottom left. You'd be able to appreciate that this is a hard acrylic flat splint with small canine extensions that the patient was wearing 24 hours a day, excepting for when eating for about eight months. Why? This patient had a road traffic accident, right? Unfortunately, what happens with an accident is you get a whiplash injury, okay? There is sudden trauma. What this can do, is the discs from both sides may displace forward and the condyle starts loading what is called as retrodiscal tissue. Now, no matter how much I press the joint with the disc in place, the patient gets no pain because the disc, if you remember the definition of centric relation says the disc is a vascular non-innervated. It has no nerve supply, so no pain. But the moment the disc gets displaced forward because of the road traffic accident, the condyle goes and starts loading the retrodiscal tissue, which is filled with nerve supply, which means the patient cannot even bring the teeth together. The moment she touches teeth, she gets pain. Oh my God, that's a, that's a pretty, pretty bad state to be in, right? How do you treat this case? You first stabilize the TM joint with the help of an orthotic, which is nothing but a permissive splint, also called as a stabilization splint. You may hear this as the Tarnow splint. You may hear this as the Ramford splint. You may hear of this as the SRS splint or the superior repositioning splint. Again, multiple names for the same kind of splint. And that is an ideal splint designed for a temporomandibular joint disorder. Unfortunately, this is not a platform where I am in a position to give you more information. But does that mean I'm going to leave you haywire and astray saying, Dek lo bhai, koi bhi TMJ pain aata hai patient ko to? Nah. I also have this desire to help you gain more knowledge and understanding. And for the same, a quick announcement that I'd like to share with you, friends. In the month of Jan, I have a four-day course dedicated to TM joint pain management. This is 25th through the 28th of Jan. It is right here at the Indian Dental Association head office. In case you are keen on getting more knowledge and information on this, I'm sharing with you a QR code for a WhatsApp number. Just scan the same and ask for details of the TMD course. And my team will be more than happy to share this with you. If you are someone who's new, and says there's too much competition. Mujhe kuch chalak karna hai, kuch naya karna hai. This could be your domain because there are hardly any clinicians in this field. If you are someone who's senior in practice, this again could be your domain. I would love to take you through the journey of TMD and orofacial pain management during this course. 
Okay, now what was the concern for this patient? Because she was stabilized on that splint and because she had lost the discs, her bite had completely changed to a point where once we removed the splint, this is how she bites. This is not a physiologic occlusion. If you look closely, there is hardly any contact between the anterior teeth, the posterior teeth on the left side. If you look at the sevens on the top right side, there is no contact between them. Because remember, when the temporomandibular joint settles, there is no way I can confirm it in which direction will it go. I simply stabilize the joint and that's my protocol. First, take care of the joint because in the presence of an unstable joint, you cannot have a stable occlusion. So stabilize the joint. Once the joint is stable, look at what can you do with the occlusion. Now, the ideal way for this patient, of course, would be telling the patient, you know what, let's look at orthodontics. Because with orthodontics, I can physiologically and within biological limits, reposition these teeth to get the perfect occlusion back. Unfortunately, she's from a different continent and she doesn't have time. And she says, can you do a full mouth reconstruction for me? But try to be as conservative as you possibly can be. Unfortunately, that falls right under my distinct forte, which is to do full mouths using the protocols of tabletop, minimally invasive, partial bonded restorations. And that is what we committed to for this patient. Now, a bigger concern for her was not just her static bite, but I want you to closely look as she goes into a right lateral movement, the canines are not even contacting. What is guiding the occlusion in right lateral? If you look closely, it is the mandibular first molar and that mandibular first molar is actually an implant crown. Always remember friends, most implant failures typically happen post loading. And that is because we are not looking at interferences in lateral excursions. We only check static occlusion. We make sure that the tooth is deocluded so that it doesn't break, but it still fractures. The implant still undergoes some or the other form of breakdown. And that is because there are excursive interferences that also have to be looked into. A similar problem in left lateral. In left lateral, if you look closely again, the, the premolar and the molar guiding, each of these were implant crowns. Now, unfortunately, when you have implants guiding the occlusion, you will have occlusal overload on the implants. And remember, implants don't have periodontal ligament to accommodate. And hence, implant often undergoes biological failures or prosthetic failures. Okay. Now, day one. What do I do on day one? Patient has walked into my practice. Patient has already told me, Doc, I only have 10 days in India. And I want you to do this treatment for me ASAP. So day one, I start with taking pictures for her. I make an intraoral scan. I've removed the splint. I've scanned the upper arch, scanned the lower arch. The patient bites down. I scan the bite. Now, this is the neutral bite position in which I have to do my entire reconstruction so that I can get uniform intensity contact on all teeth. What have I also done? I have also at this time communicated with my laboratory technician and told the technician that I am going to have this patient come in and I want to keep yourself, keep yourself free for me. I want you to make sure that you don't waste my time or my patient's time by taking up some other case. This should be on our top priority. All right. So this discussion has already been done with the technician. What does the technician do? This is the best part. No impressions, right? No model pouring, no shipping, no couriering, no nothing, which means in about three or four hours on day one itself, the technician has sent this back to me. This is a 2D design, all right, that I can actually see in three dimensions. That's brilliant, right? Because I can move things around. And if my patient says, I want this a little longer, I want this to be like this. If I feel the bite needs to be corrected a little bit, all of these corrections can be made digitally to a point where I and my patient are both convinced that this is the right thing moving forward. What do I do? I get these models 3D printed. 3D printing again doesn't take too long. So I get these 3D mod uh, models printed. I make putty indices. Remember I told you putty indices still analog. You, you can't go uh, digital with putty indices. So you make putty indices freehand. And I love to use C silicon for making putty indices. Quick question, C. What does C stand for? C, C. C stands for cheap. It is a sasta and a sundar silicon material for making putty indices. 
Remember, it's not a good material for making impressions, but for making your indices, it works just fine. So I make a putty index. I give the patient a test drive on day two. Okay. So day one is all about my planning. Day two is when I start executing. Day two, first appointment in the morning. I have cleared my entire schedule for the day. My only and only top priority is that patient. I'm going to start with my full mouth test drive and volumetric reductions through the test drive. And on day two, I'm going to complete all my tooth preparations. Now, the advantage is because I am minimally invasive, because I'm going to do partial bonded restoration, some veneer, some crown lace, some overlays, the amount of preparation is not that much, which means the amount of time that I take per preparation is less. So I am not going to tire the patient out completely. I am not completely drained either, but it is extremely fulfilling and very satisfying to see your work coming out like this, minimally invasive, maximally productive. Haven't we moved away from amalgam and we now do composite today? Is it only because of aesthetics? No. With amalgam, we had to be extremely aggressive with our preparations. And I love to quote GV Black on this. And we all remember this, right? Extension for prevention. I'm talking about the entire other end of the domain, which is prevention of extension. Just reshuffle the words and it's a new world altogether. Minimally invasive biomimetic dentistry. That's, the, that's my understanding of the future. The future of dentistry is aesthetically determined, digitally influenced, and enamel-based. Right, preserve what exists rather than meticulous replacement of what has been lost is what Divan Dictum states. So I'm trying to be as conservative. I am still on day two. What do I do immediately after I complete my preps? I go ahead and make my scans. All right, these scans are made at the final vertical dimension in centric relation. Now the question that I know that's coming in your minds is: Once I've prepared all the teeth, how do I get the vertical dimension right? And more importantly, how do I get my centric relation correct? One thing that I want to point out here right now, friends, is whenever you are doing a digital full mouth reconstruction, you have to take the CR record at your final vertical dimension. I repeat myself, you will take your centric relation bite record at your final vertical dimension only. Remember, when you do analog, Okay, which means when you've mounted a semi-adjustable articulator, you can open and close the bite when you have taken a face bow record. You can do that. You can raise the vertical, drop the vertical on a semi-adjustable articulator without loss of accuracy. But when you do digital articulation, what you see right now is upper and lower casts digitally articulated. There is no true hinge axis. So what happens here is when you work with digital articulators, digital articulators open like this, straight down. How do we open our jaws? Downward and backward. This is yet not possible on a digital or a simulation, which is digital, which means on digital articulation, you have to record your vertical dimension at the final position itself. You cannot or should not raise or drop the VD when you are working with digital protocol. So the question arises, how do I get that vertical dimension correct? And the answer, friends, is with the help of leaf gauge. What is a leaf gauge? Strips of mylar. You see something that I have designed here because unfortunately, our India mein milta nahi hai. and that is why I have gone through the effort of getting these designed, manufactured, and they are now available with MIK dental. These are strips of mylar that are numbered. It goes from one up to 60 and each leaf is a hundred microns, which basically means 10 leaves gives me one millimeter. So what am I doing here? I want you guys to understand this on this particular picture. Okay. What do I do? I measure from Zenith to Zenith. What is this? This is my technician sending me a digital test drive. What do I do on that test drive is I measure from zenith to zenith. Which zenith to zenith? Maxillary incisal edge to mandibular incisal edge. Okay, so I am measuring from the gingival zenith here of the central up to the gingival zenith of the lower central. Let's say, for example, this distance is about 20 millimeters. 
just giving you a random understanding, it is 20 millimeters. So what will I do now? I will, with the help of the leaf gauge, increase or decrease the number of leaves till the zenith to zenith distance once again comes back to 20, which means I have reproduced the vertical dimension that I had gotten approval for during my test drive. I am not looking at allowing my technician to open or close the vertical digitally. I am giving my final CR at the final VD with the help of this leaf cage. I hope you've understood this concept of getting the VD right with the help of the leaf cage because you can increase or decrease the number of leaves whenever you want. Every leaf that you subtract, you are dropping the vertical by 0.1 millimeter. Every leaf that you add, you are increasing the vertical by 0.1. So you have a lot of control. If your zenith to zenith distance in your test drive was 20.2 millimeters, can you recreate that with the leaf gauge? Yes, you can. Absolutely possible. Okay. Now, when it comes to centric relation, I am someone who's a very, very strong believer in working in a neutral jaw position. If you've ever attended any of my lectures or courses on a full mouth reconstruction topic, I always say CR is the most important aspect that determines the success against failure of your full mouth case. I am not comfortable yet with the byte scan that I get with the help of the digital technology because the byte scan is made with no contact whatsoever. If I were to go back and show you this, you will realize that there is no contact between the upper and the lower. There's actually gap, there's air in between. So I am never 100% confident if my scanner has been able to scan and record the byte to complete precision. So what do I do? This is where I go, Andy. I bring in the analog world in and I go ahead and at that same vertical of 28 leaves, which is specific to this patient, I go ahead and record a physical CR byte with the help of Bital, which is an aluminum reinforced block of byte registration wax, not modeling wax. Mind you. Okay. Remember, all of this is still happening on day two. I have completed my preparations. I have scanned the upper arch, scanned the lower arch, scanned the bite, but I have also made a physical CR record. Is that where I stop with my analog world? No. I also go ahead and take a Facebook for this patient. Why do I take a Facebook for this patient? If you look closely, the there is a cant to the maxilla. Remember the patient's gingival zeniths were not matching. And that wasn't because the gingiva was incorrect. It is because the entire plane of the maxilla was canted. And here you can appreciate this with the help of the red line that I am drawing to help you understand that the maxilla is not flat in this patient. It's canted. Now, please try to understand if the maxilla is canted. And if my technician doesn't realize or is not told that the maxilla is canted, what will happen is when the technician sends me the final restorations, they all look perfectly straight on the model. But when I place it in the patient's mouth, the entire bite goes off. And it's going to look horrendous. Because if your incisal plane is not parallel to the interpupillary line, it is an aesthetic failure. Your midline is not going to be straight. Your midline is going to be canted. Your entire occlusal plane is going to be canted. And that is why for this specific patient, I went the extra step of an analog in uh, analog step, which was to record a Facebook. I did not do all of this as a part of my planning. Remember that I am doing all of this as a part of my definitive porcelain work because I don't want to take chances. So what were the analog steps that I did? I took a CR record and I made a Facebook record. If you do not know how to take a Facebook record, go ahead and learn it. I'm telling you, it's the simplest thing possible on earth. It's, it's just a mental block that Facebook, anyone can take a Facebook. It's, it's just a matter of committing to it. And I know for clinics where the technician comes in to take a Facebook. Socho yaar, agar technician kar sakta hai, hum kyun nahi? It's all about committing to learning the art. That's about it. Okay. Darna nahi hai. Dar ke aage jeet hai. Aur main masti masti mein kehta hu. Dar ke aage jeet hai. Jeet ke aage jag jeet hai. 
so chill <laughs> it's okay all right the third thing that i did analog for this patient is i actually went ahead and made physical impressions i know you're wondering yaar full mouth scan to kiya fir impression kai ko this is where i'm telling you for single unit two units three units bridges wagaire kar rahe ho na scan is more than sufficient to give you a brilliant predictable and a very very accurate result but when i'm talking about full mouth reconstructions i think there is still room for improvement especially when i do minimally invasive dentistry why is that a lot of minimally invasive dentistry friends does not involve opening contacts or opening contacts just a little bit so here i'm going to show you this particular patient same view four different perspectives first the patient's lower incisal view then the scan view the printed model view and the stone cast view and i want all of you all to appreciate this as i zoom into this one if you look at the two incisors the lower incisors towards the midline and then towards the left side of the screen you will see that i've created a sliver of a gap i have not opened the contact completely but thoda sa gap create kiya hai taki wo die cutting ditching ka kaam ho sake okay now an important thing to remember here is unfortunately our scanners are not as accurate today to catch that little gap that is why what you see here on screen is that gap seems to be captured and closed digitally is it closed in my patient's mouth it's not but on the scan here it looks like it's closed if it's closed on the scan of course it will be closed on the 3d printed model this is where i go back to my impression because my impression can pour a cast which is so damn accurate where the smallest of gap can be recreated which is why when i'm working on my definitive restorations i want my technician to do the fit check on the stone model specifically when i am doing my partial restorations let me show you the same thing from another perspective towards the front you can see small gaps that i have created the scanner does not catch those gaps this is so obvious right if you look closely between the incisal edges rather between the incisors there is a small gap that i have created the scanner has not captured that gap and i'm talking about scanning in hd in that area with the best scanners available in the market which means my 3d printed model also has a defect in a sense but my stone cast has a very accurate reproduction which is why i go back to this then why am i still sticking to digital agar mujhe analog hi karna hai to pura analog kyun na karu and this is where the copy paste of digital comes in look here this is my digital plan this is what my patient has approved as a part of my test drive this is where i love digital technology because my final look closely is a replica is an absolute duplicate i will never have a situation where my patient will be like nahi but wo design to alag tha wo temporary to alag dikh rahe the wo test drive to alag tha final to alag hai i don't want that scenario i don't want my patient questioning whether i have done the right job or not and this is not just from the aesthetic front more importantly this is from the palatal and occlusal face as well the final is an exact replica in every sense which means if i have gotten my occlusion correct in my test drive i don't need to do a lot of adjustments with my final and that is the reason why friends i love digital technology so much but as i said i am still working with a semi adjustable articulator and i'll show you one more reason why semi adjustable articulators are still important and i'm talking day 3 day 4 because day 1 maine planning kiya day 2 maine preparation kiya day 3 day 4 is for my technician to fabricate these restorations and send them back to me you can see all of these are individual restorations none of these are splinted these are all lithium disilicate emax milled okay which means i've gotten the exact duplicate now what do i do on day 5 i go ahead and bond all of these in day 5 i have completed the bonding remember these are not cemented which means gic se chipkaya nahi hai resin se ek ek ko individually bond kiya hai and this is my patient's bite immediately after bonding cr equal mip you can see all the teeth are perfectly contacting and intercuspating another brilliant aspect that i love about digital technologies as soon as i've completed the case i go ahead and i scan okay let me first share a limitation here ek limitation kya hai because it does not have a true hinge axis 
okay there are new simulations that can give you these excursive movements as well so what my technician did here is he designed everything to make sure that there are no posterior interferences to make sure there is canine disseclusion make sure there is protrusive disseclusion which means there is mutually protected occlusion as a part of the digital setup panga kaha hua batao aapko panga hua jab maine actually inko analog simulator pe check kiya which means when i checked the lateral excursion on the semi adjustable articulator i found there were interferences look here in right lateral in right lateral everything looks good you can see the canine is guiding there are no interferences these are very close to each other and that's okay problem was when i took this articulator into left lateral i want you to look closely at the terminal molars the 7 and the 6 in the patient's mouth according to digital simulation said no interferences remember digital simulator told me no interferences on the semi adjustable articulator i could see interferences so what do i want to do i want to test whether the digital analog is correct uh, sorry the digital planning was correct or whether the semi adjustable articulator is correct once again repeating digital simulation told me no interference semi adjustable articulator told me interference in left lateral so i went into the patient's mouth after bonding and i asked my patient to go into excursive movements here she is going into a right lateral movement what do you see you see canine guidance which is something that i saw as a part of the digital world and also as a part of the analog world so i was very happy but when i asked my patient to go into a left lateral movement i want you guys to look closely that terminal molar is actually in interference which means in lateral excursion the lower 7 is touching the upper 7 that's not something that's desirable agar ye interference chhod diya na aapne this is typically where ya to ceramic fracture hoga piche ya ceramic debond hoga or something that's very common upper 7 will start drifting distally and there will be food lodgement between the 6 and the 7 and you will be left wondering yaar ye gap to pehle nahi tha ab kahan se aaya if you leave a posterior interference in lateral excursion there is a possibility that your terminal maxillary molar may start drifting distally creating an open contact and inviting food lodgement between the 6 and the 7 i do not want that what do i do i take my articulating papers i identify the interference i trim the interference and i leave my patient like this this is pure canine guidance in left lateral there is no posterior interference what so ever that is how i want to plan and execute which means my digital planning in this regard for lateral excursion fell short which is the reason why friends andy semi adjustable articulator ab bhi lagega to get the perfect fit of your restorations especially when you do partial restorations and also to make sure that you do not have lateral interferences now one big advantage that i believe is a part of this digital world and that is the fact that after i've done all my work i can scan again and now you're wondering why am i scanning after the full mouth is done and this is contingency planning friends this is planning for the worst case scenario imagine imagine 2 saal baad 4 saal baad 6 saal baad worst case scenario one of these restorations debonds or comes out and your patient says you know what doc uh can you get that one restoration made for me if it was the analog world what you what do you need to do you would have to call your patient in make your impression send it to the lab tell the lab to make it come back tell the patient come back again but with the digital world all of this can be stored in the library and in the library all of these are individual designs so what can the technician do you know what you call the technician you know what brother uh 26 wapas bana ke dena na ओके सर बना के भिजवा देता आपको डिजाइन तो ऑलरेडी रेडी है ना ना इंप्रेशन की जरूरत है ना किसी बाइट स्कैन की जरूरत है एवरीथिंग इज इन देयर ही विल कॉपी पेस्ट सेंड अ रेस्टोरेशन पेशेंट कम्स इन सेम डे बॉन्ड पेशेंट आउट ब्रिलियंट I mean, I personally love this because occlusion, fit, proximal contacts, everything can be catered to with this particular technology. And of course, using the Andy protocols for me, what's most important is I can leave my patient. uh extremely happy smiling 
And uh, more importantly to me, it is to change my patient's lives because we're not looking at just changing the smile. We're looking at changing the bite and changing the patient's perspective towards themselves. And this is how, friends, from start to end, I was able to complete a full mouth reconstruction using the principles and protocols of analog and digital work together. So it is not a complete digital full mouth, but it is a digitally influenced full mouth reconstruction. Here again, I share a quote with you by the late Steve Jobs, who says, if you do what excites you, you don't have to be pushed. The vision will pull you. I have a question for you now. And the question is, friends, do you wish to learn more from me? Huh? Ha, bola. Pakka. Okay. Guess what? I'm very, very happy, friends, to share with you that a whole lot of my content is now pre-recorded and available on mikeducation.com. If you cannot reach me, if I am not coming to your city, it does not mean that you cannot learn from me. Allow me the opportunity to share my knowledge with you on an online platform. Full mouth reconstructions, temporomandibular joint disorders, complete dentures, porcelain veneers, uh, crown and bridge dentistry, occlusion. I've tried to record almost everything and put it up. And feel free to use this promo code so that you can get special discounts when you go ahead and register for the same. If you want to learn from me in person, I'm happy to share friends that if you are someone who wants to be a certified full mouth reconstruction specialist, if you have questions that you want to ask me live, then I am also doing a full mouth reconstruction live event, which is planned for Jan. Again, the same QR code. If you want more information, go ahead and check it out. And I'm very, 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 very happy and thrilled to make an announcement on this platform today. If you want to go through the FMR journey with me, not just for a few days, but commit for the long haul. It's like, sir, aapke saath full mouth karna hai. Aapke under ek full mouth karna hai. Mujhe chahiye ke main full mouth karu, aap dekho. Mujhe chahiye ke main full mouth karu, aap mera haath pakad ke mujhse karao. It's possible. Okay. Just laying the foundation here, friends. Very, very soon. All right. If everything goes as planned, come March of 2024. March of 2024, we will be launching a full mouth reconstruction fellowship program where you will be doing a full mouth on a patient in my physical presence. Fingers crossed, this is with the Indian Dental Association. This will be in Mumbai at the head office. Watch out for more information on the same. And if this idea tickles your brain, you have taken the first step towards becoming self-confident. Eliminate that fear. Full mouth is all about knowledge. And remember, knowledge is the perfect antidote for fear. I am here to help you through that particular journey. At this point, I'd like to extend a big thank you to all of you who have sat through this hour-long session with me. I hope it did justice to the time and effort that you spent. I know those eyes are droopy right now because this is sleep time, right? One last thing, if you want to stay connected with me, go ahead and uh, follow me on social media. And I'm sharing these QR codes because there's a lot of amazing content and I do not want you to lose out on that learning with me. As I close this presentation, friends, I'd like to tell you, Andy is the way forward with respect to full mouth reconstructions. All right. This is, friends, where we are going to get in a presentation which is on the digital simulation platform that we have started here at the Indian Dental Association. I want you to go ahead and pen down any questions that you have for me because immediately after this session, I will come back on this very same chair talking to you and addressing any of your concerns. Once again. I love to say this at the end of all my lectures. I wish you all an interference-free life. All right. See you guys in just a bit. All yours. Thank you so much, Dr. Moes, for this very apt diet for dental fraternity. 
we will soon have a question and answer session but before that i now request dr sasha farao who is heading the digital smile center to give us a brief introduction on it Hello and good afternoon to all of you. This is Dr. Sasha speaking to you on behalf of the Digital Smile Center, and I am thrilled to welcome you all on board. The Digital Smile Center is an initiative by the Indian Dental Association that aims at bringing dentists and patients throughout the country together on one platform. As a dentist, by registering with the DSC, you can convert your clinic into an IDA certified digital smile center and avail of huge benefits for your practice. Especially if you are one focused on aesthetic dentistry, smile designing and digital dentistry. Now the shift to digital era is an unstoppable trend, which is an exciting time for the dental profession as more technologies are being introduced that involves diagnosis, decision-making, treatment delivery, re-evaluation, and long-term patient, or patient oral health care. The goal of digital dentistry is to improve the efficiency and precision of dental procedures while also providing predictable outcomes to patients in the most pleasant environment. So to begin with, your practice will feature as a center on our website. We are actively working towards promoting this initiative throughout the country to increase awareness about a brighter and whiter smile and also making it easily accessible to the public through our user-friendly website. So you can definitely expect an increased patient footfall. There are options available to you to make your profile more interactive by adding a logo, along with services and facilities offered by your center. You can also use this platform to showcase your cases by posting them through your profile, along with photos of your clinic and just about anything else that you may have to offer. For patients who are looking for dental treatments, they can also scroll through the Find Center page and find the Digital Smile Center that is nearest to them. They can also use the filter options to narrow down their searches. They can limit their searches with respect to state, city, area code, services, and facilities. Patients can request appointments at their preferred digital smile center on days convenient to them and also enter in their details with the reason for their appointment and all of this through the DSC website. Now, as a digital smile center, you will have access to a range of packages that provide a toolkit that contains a certificate, a technique manual, an ID card, a poster, a glow sign board for your clinic, educational brochures for your patients, data cards, and, a, and DSC stickers. You also have access to educational programs conducted by DSC, including a monthly free webinar, by different speakers on an array of topics. There are also many upcoming fellowships and workshops that you can register for through the education page on our website and keep yourself updated with the latest trends. These certifications will definitely be a feather in your cap. Now, DSC is not just limited to aesthetic or digital dentistry. So you can promote comprehensive treatment alternatives that you are able to provide to your patients, ranging from simple restorations, root canal procedures, crowns and bridges, braces and aligners, to even implant-supported full mouth rehabilitations. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead and register now.
Thank you so much, Dr. Sasha, for getting us updated on what Digital Smile Center is all about. Looking forward to all of you for registering with us in Digital Smile Center. So now, let's begin with a short question and answer session with Dr. Moes. Hmm. Interesting. All right, let's have the laptop here so that I can run through the questions, please. Can I have it this side? Thank you. All right, so guys, thank you so much once again. Uh, we're actually loaded with questions, questions that are running in. <laughs> As I speak, thank you for being uh, inquisitive and interactive. Uh, I'm going to run through and start selecting a few and then discuss them with you. Uh, the question that I see here first right now is Ramya, who says, can we scan the articulated models and do digital FMR? Sure, we can. Sir. There's no harm in doing that. Uh, there's one way in which you scan the teeth, all right, or you make your impression, the lab will pour the cast and then scan the model as well. That is also an option for sure. All right. The next question is by Viral, who says, uh, while using the leaf gauge, what is the probability of recording the mandible in a protrusive or retrusive position? Uh, although I'm guessing it says nominal. Can this distort the CR record? So um, using a leaf gauge is not without its flaws. Having said that, because we do not have any other tool at our disposal, we have to learn the art of how to use the same. So I'll tell you what I typically do. We're never using a leaf gauge for someone who has a very deep bite, for someone who's biting very hard, all right? So we always ask the patient to bite gently into the leaf gauge. And I always record the centric relation in a reclined position always all right this is something i want you guys to start doing even for your complete denture patients hum hamesha struggle karte right complete dentures ke sath ke patient ko bolte cr mein jao bite karo bite karo patient aage leke aata hai and you're struggling because we've never been taught the right way we always take cr in a seated position no take cr in a reclined position remember in a reclined position gravity is pulling the mandible back so you're aiding gravity you're taking its help to make sure that you can Record your centric bite correct. And if your patient is not going into CR properly, which means your patient's not going into the correct position, the first thing you do is you tell your patient, bring your jaw forward. Tell your patient to forcefully protrude forward and then come back. When the patient comes back, you will realize that you almost always go into what is called as neuromuscular release, which is a neutral position. In this position, you go ahead and record the CR. Remember one thing, however, when you're recording the CR with the help of the leaf gauge, it is also important to have basic knowledge of bimanual manipulation. This is something that was uh, described to all of us by the late Dr. Peter Dawson. Uh, just go ahead and run a Google search for bimanual manipulation of the mandible. And you will understand what is the finger position and what is the grasp. If you have my book, which is the master volume of clinical fixed prosthodontics, I have described this aspect in detail in the chapter on centric relation. All right. But today, more and more and more patients, I am using leaf gauge, at least to record the CR for the definitive work. I'm not using it as a part of my diagnostic work, but for my definitive work, yes, because often patients come in a deprogrammed manner. All right. Hope that answers your question, Viral. The next is what are the methods to record CR digitally? This is by Dinesh Deep. So Dinesh, uh, what we do is we have the leaf gauge placed in the midline. The patient is told to bite, bring the jaw forward and take it back. At that back position, all right, I am basically pulling the cheek and scanning the bite. All right. Now, very important is to make sure at this point, the patient does not move the jaw, the patient does not open. So make sure the patient's head is perfectly straight and the patient is reclined in the chair. Kahi bar kya hota hai na? Uh, patients try to make sure ke bhai, aapko taklif nahi na, doctor sahab, so they tip their head towards you. And that's a problem. Because gravity is now pulling the mandible towards that side, you may lose centric relation. Choti se choti cheez bhi matter karti hai. Jab hum 
फुल माउथ रिकंस्ट्रक्शन की बात कर रहे हैं ओके सो डिजिटली सी आर रिकॉर्डिंग इज ऑलवेज डन विथ एन एंटीरियर स्टॉप अप्लायस सो आईदर यूज अ लीफ गेज और यू कुड गेट फ्रॉम द लेबोरेटरी अस डी प्रोग्राम K O I S. It's an anterior stop appliance. So its height you can adjust. Kar sakte ho. It's made out of acrylic, so you can either add more height or subtract height till you get the final vertical dimension right, and then you scan the bite at that particular position. Now, there is another protocol or way, and I'm going to share this with you. Uh, I'm yet not 100% convinced, but it is out there, and there is literature on it, which says if you've recorded the CR bite. pre treatment you don't have to record the cr bite after preparation why if you've recorded the bite pre treatment what have you done you've recorded the teeth and the gingival margins and the attached gingiva you've completed your preps what changed the anatomy of your tooth preparation changed did the gingival margin change no did the attached gingiva change no so what you do now is you once again scan all your prepared teeth the marginal gingiva and the attached mucosa and then leave it to the computer to superimpose the prep scan onto the pre treatment scan and when you have that you don't need a second cr bite record at all again i'm telling you this is the future i'm yet not 100% convinced in past cases mujhe 19 20 difference aaya hai mujhe bite adjust karne ki mehnat lagi hai which is the reason why to keep myself completely stress free and to go to sleep in peace knowing i've done the best possible for my patient i still go ahead and record a digital cr i also still go ahead and record an analog cr with the help of the bite registration wax okay so that would be my take dinesh deep Okay. The next question is by Vaishnavi. She says, uh, "How to understand if the VD needs to be increased or kept same? Is VD recorded first or is CR recorded first? As we learn in complete dental CR, is dependent on VD. My dear, it's independent of VD. As a matter of fact, in a digital full mouth reconstruction case, we record the CR and the VD together. It's not that one before, the other after." we as a matter of fact record and i'm going to introduce a new term to you it's called verticentric bite what is a verticentric bite it is a bite record made in centric relation at the final vertical dimension so we're looking at recording both of these together okay whether you have to raise the bite or not raise it is something that de is determined by the position of the anterior teeth in cr kai bar kya hota hai a bruxer who comes into practice comes in an edge to edge bite i can't reconstruct the patient in an edge to edge bite i want to deprogram i take this patient's mandible downward and back okay whenever you open the bite remember the mandible will go downward and backward when you take your patients from mip to cr which is deprogramming which is done either with a leaf gauge or with uh with a lucia jig or an unwind md appliance you take the mandible downward and backward when you do that what have you done you've converted an edge to edge patient into a class 1 if you have a class 1 relationship you don't have to raise the vertical but if you have let's say a if you heard a pseudo cross bite it's a pseudo cross bite you deep program the mandible comes edge to edge that's not enough i have to give the patient anterior guidance so i open the vertical because as i open the vertical the mandible goes downward and backward and as the mandible goes downward and backward i can recreate the anterior guidance most important most important is anterior guidance so you need that horizontal and vertical overlap which is your overjet and your overbite if you want more information i strongly uh, recommend that you go ahead on mikeducation.com and and look at the fmr course or some day come in and join me so that i can give you more understanding on this topic it's easier said than done and there's a lot of explanation that goes into the same All right next is by dr narendra padiyar he says how did you transfer the information of the maxillary cant from the face for record to the digital design so that it could be corrected in the final restoration brilliant question and this is where we started off with the question answer session saying can we scan the articulated models so that's what was done here uh, narendra face for record was made casts were poured mounted and then it was scanned to get the orientation 
all right, off the CANT with relation to the hinge axis and transfer that onto the digital setup. Okay, that is quite easily possible provided you have a Facebook and a scan of that uh, record possible. Okay, next is a question by Sachin Kar Kargwal. Sachin Kargwal, he's asking, sir, I have just passed my BDS degree. So can I do FMR without doing MDS? <laughs> there is no MDS for full mouth. It's very similar to how no one's going to stop you from doing crown and bridge or root canal. It's like, you endo not do endo, root canal. Kar sakte. Aisa hai, dost. Uh, all you need is the knowledge, the skill and the attitude. Bas. Degree hai aapke paas. Agar BDS hai, you are in a position to treat full mouth reconstructions. Those treatments have to come from the heart. Okay. Skill comes from the hand. All right. For a patient with a large tongue and obstructive sleep apnea, FMR and centric relation, will that be a restriction of tongue space or worsening of the OSA? This is again a lovely question by Ramya and you are absolutely right in saying that. Whenever I have a patient with an obstructive sleep apnea, any deprogramming of the mandible, which takes the mandible into CR, actually worsens the OSA. Okay. So, when I have a patient where I believe obstructive sleep apnea could be present, I'm running that patient first through a polysomnography. It is a sleep study. It could be done in the laboratory. It could be done at home. And why am I doing this? This is me insisting to the patient saying, whether you get the full mouth done from me or not, please get this test done because people can die from obstructive sleep apnea. Yes, not too far back. We heard of Bappi Larry. Passed away. Why? Obstructive sleep apnea. Look, Kathan are kitni achi mothi ratme soya savere utaini. Boss, to make koi idea. Us insan pe kya biti yogi wo kuch minute when the entire body stops functioning because you stop breathing. What has stopped? The diaphragm muscle has stopped functioning. Okay. So I will always insist that the patient get a polysomnography done if I believe this patient has OSA, not for everyone. If I believe this patient has obstructive sleep apnea, and typically these are people who have a, a very wide circumference of the neck and classically they will be like, Itna zor zor se hai mera pati ya meri patni. Okay, so that's classic for someone who may have an OSA. Now, if the OSA is positive, if it's mild, it's okay. If it's moderate or severe, treat the OSA first. And this is done with the help of a CPAP machine where a patient sleeps with a mask on that pushes air. So what is that mask doing? The mask is keeping the airway patent whilst I do my deprogramming and I complete my reconstruction. So even if I take the jaw into a neutral position and the tongue is collapsing the airway because of my full mouth, as long as the patient is sleeping with that CPAP unit, you are not going to lose that patient. So keep your conscious clear in that regard uh can we have access to this webinar later as well is what devyangi is asking i'm not sure i'm asking the team here yes we've recorded this guys we've recorded this which means you can connect uh with the indian dental association team and at some level uh i believe they should be able to share the recording uh with you okay how do you get incisal guidance where maxillary anteriors are missing? This is uh, Goripati uh, Purna asking us. So whenever you have anterior teeth that are missing, you replace them with implants and you splint them together. Individual implant, you cannot get guidance from. Individual implant restoration and an anterior is literally dikhane wala dat. Okay, uh, there is no function out of it. But when you get multiple anterior teeth with implants that are splinted together, together they can provide the guidance that you need. Okay. Uh, next is a question by Tharlok, which says, how many days for TMJ correction? Um, Tharlok, we never correct the TM joint. We merely manage it. Remember, once breakdown has occurred, it's irreversible. We're talking about non-surgical management. So management is all about taking the primary etiology away and creating what is called as a pseudo disc. When you have arthritis in the, in the knee joint or the hip joint, you have to do a joint replacement surgery. Fortunately, with TM joints, 
even when the disc is displaced, we can stabilize the joint with the help of a pseudo disc. And literature says anywhere between three to six months of splint therapy is needed in an attempt to create the pseudo disc. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Raman. That is very, very sweet of you. Next is a question by Dr. Abraham. He says, how is mock-up occlusion done in CR during digital planning? Okay. So what I typically do as a part of my CR record is I will record the CR with the leaf gauge in or with the help of a quiz appliance. And I increase or decrease the number of leaves until I get the first point of tooth contact. It's called RCP. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little technical because the question needs for me to. Okay. RCP is called retruded contact position. It equals to your centric occlusion. Once I have that centric occlusion in place, there's typically one tooth at the back is in contact and all the other teeth, they have no occlusion. So I go ahead and scan at this point and I tell my technician, wherever there is a gap, just add in digital wax so that you can get the articulation correct. That's how I get the CR and the MIP to coincide with each other. Okay. Uh, next is a question by Tushar. He says, after prep, I can see the margin on the tooth, but after scanning, I can't see the same margins on the scanned image. What to do for the same and also in the patient? When you adjusted the 2.7, did you polish the same? Absolutely, as yes. polishing is imperative. You cannot leave the porcelain rough because uh, it's going to be weak. It'll fracture. It'll abrade the antagonist as well. So polishing is something that I do intraorally. And as I said on this platform, I'm not going to take any, any trade names. But you get a lot of these porcelain polishers that can be used on your uh, contra angle hand speed, uh, on your contra angle hand piece between 10,000 to 12,000 RPM. Uh, they're different for zirconia. They're different for lithium disilicate. You may typically typically get two different uh, grits, uh, medium fine, or you may get three, which will be uh, medium fine and extra fine. Different companies have uh, different options there for you to choose from. Okay. Now, when you see a margin and you cannot scan it, remember a scan will always capture something that you see, but provided light is falling on that particular area. All right. Now, if there is any clavicular fluid present in that area, which means you haven't done a proper tissue retraction, it's probably not going to catch the margin. All right. So tissue retraction is something that's imperative. And what really helps is at the time of scanning, what you could do is ask your assistant to take air and blow over that gingival margin so that the clavicular fluid can get displaced and the ability of capturing that margin increases. All right. So that's a small take in there. How do we treat a Bruxer? Asks Tarlok. My friend, that is an entire book in itself. Now, unfortunately, I cannot go into the depths of that because bruxism is a centrally mediated problem. Just doing a full mouth does not mean the patient will stop bruxing. There are protocols, however, where we reconstruct a collapsed bite, but that's beyond the domain of this particular session. So unfortunately, I will not be able to answer it. As I said, if you want more knowledge on it, uh, I am here to give it to you. It's just that it's on a different platform, mikeducation.com or my book, uh, which is the master volume or come in for one of my courses or remember March of 2024, I start with my fellowship. How about you join in? Allow me to teach you step by step and handhold you through how to restore a Bruxer. I promise I'll give you a Bruxer patient. How about that? Okay. What is the resin cement that can be used in this particular method? Uh, so Dr. Mohammed, for anteriors, whenever the ceramic is thin and I know light will pass through it, I am using a light cure resin cement. And when it's for posteriors, I'm looking at using a dual cure resin cement because those are thicker and light may not penetrate through completely. But then you have to prepare the prosthesis and prepare the tooth both. Right. And there are multiple steps of uh, etching and silenizing and etching and bonding that you have to go through. Again, I have some videos on YouTube, which you can go ahead and, and uh, watch. Or on mikeducation.com, I have some free videos where I've explained these pro procedures of uh, porcelain preparation and steps of bonding as well. Uh, more and more questions are flowing through, friends. I'm going to take two more questions because we've already overshot time. And I have colleagues here. 
so my apology <laughs> okay uh the next question is how will you know how many leaves to use for the patient so dr ashwar i'm guessing you are talking about the leaf gauge so let me go back to the case in the case i have done my planning okay and planning is done at a particular vertical dimension and at that vertical dimension i am measuring from the maxillary central incisor zenith to the mandibular zenith zenith is basically the height of your gingival margin so from the highest point on the upper to the highest point on the lower how many millimeters is this all right i measure that and then once i'm done with my tooth preparation let's say i add 50 leaves 50 leaves is 5 millimeters separation. I measure from zenith to zenith. If I measure zenith to zenith at 50 leaves and it comes up to say 23 millimeters, I need only 20. That's 3 millimeters more. So what do I do? I reduce leaves. Let's say I reduce about 20 leaves and I check again. Ab kitna hai? Achha, abhi bhi zyada hai. Let me reduce a few leaves. Ab kitna hai? Are, abhi mujhe 20.4 a raha hai. Mujhe 20 chahiye. To let me reduce 4 more leaves. Something like that. Okay, you keep adding or decreasing the number of leaves until you get that proper length correct. Okay, there are questions saying which is a good scanner. Again, apologies, friends. I am not in a position to take any brand names here. So I will not be able to help you with this. The next question is, uh, is IDA conducting any aesthetic courses for smile design? This is Dr. Priya Darshani, guys. Yes, we will soon be announcing that. Happy to hear that myself. All right. How are you going to manage crown preps as same as digital planning? So one thing that I love about crown preparation with digital planning is if a patient has come with uh, a tooth just me ek do cusp puri tarah tute hue, humne root canal kiya hua hai. I love to scan before I start prepping that tooth, before endo is done. Scan. Okay, which means you have the scan of half tooth present and half tooth broken. Digitally, your technician can add that missing half and give you a 3D printed model. index What do you do now? You complete your root canal, you go ahead and do your preparation and give your patient an immediate temporary of the final form. All right. Remember, your preparation protocols don't change, your tissue retraction and your scanning protocols don't change. But with the help of your digital technology, you can fabricate chair side temporaries for your patient with the help of bisacral. So when it comes to crown and bridge, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. I'll tell you, jump in and invest into a uh, digital scanner. It'll, it'll help build your practice, make things smoother and easier. Just make sure you have adequate patient flow. Remember, these technologies are rampantly changing. You don't want a scenario where okay, you've invested uh, hundreds and thousands of rupees into a scanner only to realize that in 2-3 years, that scanner is outdated. Ho gaya. And that's a problem that we all have faced. So make sure you have adequate number of patients, enough work, enough revenue that you generate so that you can do justice to the fact that you've invested so much money, probably taken a loan, uh, paying EMIs and things like that. So jump in, yes, but provided you already have a foundation because everything comes down to ROI. What is the return on investment and we as dentists unfortunately know how to treat patients but we don't know how to earn money i love to say this once a dentist always a poor man <laughs> but this is this is the truth we've never been taught the art of convincing patients and that is something again uh, a domain or an area where i believe in times to come you might see my footprint treatment And you don't have to appeal to them by telling them the advantage and the disadvantage. Logic. Emotions. That is how you ethically sell your work. If ever a patient asks me, Dr. Sahab, why are you doing it? doctor is doing it in You know, my answer is, why are you doing it in the I'm not justifying myself. Get it done. And then I leave them with a statement saying, repeat karne ke liye paas aajana. Humne keeda chhod diya bhai. <laughs> Ab tum jano aur tumhara decision jane. Alright. At the end of the day, I will tell them, maine bola tha na. Alright. Hindi mein mein kaate na, kaash thoda pehle liyaate bacha sakte the. 
All right, friends. On that note, I'd love to say thank you to all of you all. Thank you to the Indian Dental Association for making this possible. I wish and hope that we've done justice to the time and effort that you have spent. And I wish and hope that you guys can commit to learning more and someday commit to actually being digitally influenced in your personal and professional lives. I look forward to more interactions in times to come. Until then, bye-bye. Thank you so much, Dr. Moise. I hope the concepts are now crystal clear to all of you. Moving ahead, I would now introduce you to an avid orthodontist and dentofacial orthopedist with over 10 years of clinical experience in treating cases inclusive of complex orthodontic procedures, certified in lingual orthodontics and clear aligners. We now have Dr. Sunny Kumar Sinha on behalf of Mako Tutsi. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. So firstly, I would like to congratulate IDA for this nice initiative of Digital Smile Center. And thanks for giving me opportunity to represent Tootsie at this platform. And speaking after Dr. Moise is like uh, the same feeling. But anyway, moving forward. So I'm starting... Uh, here. Yeah. So I've got 10 minutes only, so I'll take you rapidly through the benefits of aligners, why you need to incorporate aligners into your practice, what Tootsie is doing in the field of aligners and how you can get benefited and grow together. Okay, so let's start. So as we are talking here, the world has changed a lot. Like in past 20, 30 years, everything is becoming digital more and more day by day. So the world of orthodontics. We started with meta braces, then came ceramic braces, self ligating braces, lingual, and now to aligners. Why? Because there is a need. There is a need to look good. Now, nobody wants to compromise on their aesthetics. In the world of Facebook, Insta, Reeves, and Snapchat, and whatnot, nobody wants to look like this. Okay? Now, we used to think that uh, aligners are for adults. Now, even a teenager or a school kid don't want braces. They want to look good, even more than us. Hum, hum se, zyada aesthetic conscious hote ho. Okay, so yes, the benefits of aligners, all of you should know. It is obvious, all of you know that it is like painless, invisible, removable. But the most important thing, what I would like to highlight is minimal clinical visit. Now, since we plan the treatment, the treatment planning is done on the software, everything is already planned. So we can do mild to moderate treatment cases with only one or two clinical visits with the help of only attachments and IPR. So that is a big, big, big advantage. And as compared to the conventional basis treatment where you have to call patient every month. Another important thing is that the results can be visualized. Conventionally, jab karte hai toh, the treatment plan is in the orthodontist mind. Wo aapko patient ko dikhta nahi hai. Now here, since you are getting that 3D simulation video, in that the patient will be able to see how their teeth will be moving. Okay, so that is a big benefit to for convincing the patients, I would say. Yes, definitely some biomechanical advantages are there because in aligners, the tooth is completely under the control of aligners. And since we are doing the treatment planning according to us, we have the liberty to guide the movement of each and every tooth at any particular point of time. Okay, again, these obvious things. It's easier to evaluate the tooth positions and treatment progress as we are doing everything digitally. The patient will be able to visualize the tooth and it is so accurate because whatever video, 3D simulation video, we are providing that video only is divided into models over which aligners are printed. So till the time the aligners are fitting to the patient, that means your treatment is going according to the treatment plan and what you have seen or shown in the 3D simulation video. Preservation of labial surface of the teeth because there is no braces, only attachments are there. So 
there is no a chance of accumulation of pla calculus and all or while debonding we used to see the white spots after debonding braces that can be negotiated when we are going with the aligners easier appreciation of soft tissue response and no gingivitis because the patient will be able to remove the aligners and clean his or her mouth and our self cleansing system of our ur cavity also works in this way so that is very easy to clean and that is why we can avoid gingivitis which is normally seen when we are going for a conventional basis treatment now most important thing why you should include aligners in the general practice ab sochenge ki achhi khasi practice chal rahi hai kyun sir dard lena kyun matha bachi karna why 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 should i include the aligner treatment in my practice so as per stats it shows that this aligner industry is the most one of the most growing industry in dental field it is predicted that it is going to take a boom and of 34.07% till 2030 that is a big number in india also i would tell almost 85% of the population needs orthodontic treatment and right now only 2% of people are undergoing orthodontic treatment so you can imagine how vast field we have in front of us only the need of time is to increase the awareness about the aligner treatment and i would say that tutsi has become a pioneer in that we have increased awareness so much like ki abhi har teesra chautha aadmi he knows about the aligner treatment so that's a big thing okay that is the only thing what you we need to create in this world to utilize the vast scope of aligners in this field of dentistry okay now again talking about stats if we see ki we cannot do complex treatment see i am not telling a uh, general dentist or those who are not orthodontist to jump directly into complex treatments okay i would say that almost 50 to 70% of orthodontic cases comes into mild to moderate category which can be done with one or two clinical visit only with the help of ipr and attachments with aligners leave leave the complicated cases for orthodontists no need to do that sir that or matha bachi and all but 50 to 70% of the cases you can do easily with the help of aligners with only one or two clinical visits with ipr and attachments that's the big benefit and that is why you should think about incorporating aligners into your practice now what tutsi is going to offer you see we are a digitally based aligner system with three shape prio ready auto lab care stream so if you have scanner in your uh, practice you can do the scan and send to uh, the scan to us we'll do the treatment planning and send the treatment plan to you once you approve then only it goes for production if you do not have scanner and are present in a cities where we have our scanning facility we will send the scanner for the scanning if you do not live in the city where scanning facility is available take a heavy body and light body impression send the impression to us and we'll do the needful okay so once you get the 3d simulation video you get an idea each and every detail like uh, how many aligners will be required what will be the duration of the treatment how the teeth will be moving and what all clinical procedures are required everything will be informed to you at that particular point of time so that you can make your patient aware about these things show the video to the patient once the patient is convinced you give your thumbs up and then it goes for production okay we provide attachments uh, for complicated tooth movements and i've already said that better prediction why because that video only is divided into 3d models over which aligners are printed so till the time aligners are fitting there is no chance your treatment is going anywhere other than what we have predicted in the 3d simulation video and the use of fda approved three layer sheets makes the treatment fast with a faster turnaround time and our orthodontist will be always there to support you 24/7 whenever you are stuck in anything you have any doubt you can connect with our team we'll be there to guide you now why to see see we have as i said scanning facility in few cities uh, more than six cities i guess if you st- uh stay in those cities like delhi pune bangalore mumbai and all uh you can get the scanner at your clinic and get the scanning done if you do not stay in these cities 
take the good impression with heavy heavy body and light body, send it to us, and we'll send the plan to you. We have finished almost two lakh patients right now. We are certified lab with industrial grade printers, worth crores. One thing more important about these printers are like there are n number of printers available in the market. Many people think any printer would do. No, that is not that accurate. It has to be medical grade approval, ISO approval for including that printer into your practice. That is why we are helping you people with our world class printers. Use these facilities and grow together. Okay, now whatever treatment plan we'll be sending to you that will be accurate, we'll be taking responsibility of that plan. We are not that company that will give you any kind of plan according to you if that is not practically possible. That is the most important thing that 3D video may koi kuch bhi karke bhej sakta hai. But it has to be practically possible. So we assure you that whatever treatment plan we'll be sharing with you will be 100% predictable and we take the guarantee of that. Okay, yes, many a times few refinement lines may be needed, but we won't be sending you any plan which won't be practically possible. Okay, and all the treatment plans, whatever will be sent to you is supervised by experienced orthodontists present on site. Okay, Tutsi is ISO certified, USFDA approved, and we have exhaustive data of pre and post results of the treated cases. If you get an opportunity to uh, attend a training session, what we uh, keep on doing on various platforms of IDA, you'll get to know what kind of cases we can do only with the help of aligners. Now, what benefit you will get? See, uh, you can become a Tootsie preferred partner clinic. Okay, now, as I said, Tootsie is the pioneer and has been working in increasing the awareness about the aligner treatment. We have increased the awareness so much that now every third or fourth guy knows about the line of treatment. This was not the case five years back. Correct. So people come with the query of Tutsi aligners. So when you become a Tutsi uh, preferred partner clinic, any query will be getting in your area or your region will be directing that patient to your clinic for a scan or impression or for clinical procedures. This will be done after we have trained you, we'll give you all the expertise you need to do that uh, aligner treatment. Whatever clinical procedures are required, everything will be done in a training session. Okay, as I said, we do keep conducting training sessions on various platforms of IDA. You can connect with our team to know about it. Okay. You will be getting uh, marketing materials uh, that you can show to the patient and uh, convince them for the line treatment. And uh, most about revenue, paisa kitna aega. See, see uh, even if you include one aligner patient in your practice every month, and I suppose that you are making at least 30 to 40% uh, revenue out of that or profit out of that, that means it is going to be like 6 lakhs net revenue in a year. So that's a big amount with only one patient in one month. That's it. And the chair side time is very minimal. I would say like it hardly takes 30 minutes, 40 minutes for one patient. That's it. Now, this is a planning department where the cases from all over India comes. And this is the dedicated team of our planning orthodontists who supervise these cases. None of the cases goes without the supervision of the orthodontist. So be assured that we are going to send you the perfect and the most practical and predictable treatment plan. Now just uh, take a tour uh, of our world-class lab. This is how, after the treatment planning part, the models are formed.
This is the 3D printing area with the capacity of making 5,000 moles in a day. After approval of the SMILE plan, the process of printing of models is done. And then it is thermoformed. This is the line of punching part. After the aligners have been punched, it is laser marked for unique identification of aligners. After that, it is polished. Now it comes for deburring, which makes the liner smooth and comfortable. And then it goes for chemical sterilization and packaging. Now we have fully automated our aligner manufacturing system. We have also incorporated robotic uh, trimming arm, which makes sure that the aligners are perfectly smoothly cut and there's very uh, they are comfortable for the patient. There is no pinching of aligners. Your patient won't be complaining about that. So this is the robotic arm, which cuts the aligners after it is Thermoform. So that was about the aligner manufacturing. Now coming to the sessions, what we have already conducted, we do keep conducting these training sessions so that you people can get accustomed with the clinical procedures required to do aligner treatment. So you can connect with our team on the number given or the mail uh, ID given here so that you can attend the nearest training session and you can start aligner practice as soon as possible. Now, at the end, I would like to show you the testimonial of one of our partner dentist and let's see what he says about it. So it feels great to hear such kind of testimonials. Anyway, you can uh, like experience it yourself by joining us. So that's it from my side. Now, as I said, yes, aligners are the future of orthodontics. Okay. And as they say, it is survival of the fittest and the world is moving fast towards digitalization and so is dentistry. So we have to update ourselves to survive in this world. Okay, friends. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Sunny, for your insight on why we should incorporate aligners into our dental practice. So now, for those who are interested in sports dentistry, 
We now have Dr. Atul to brief you about it. Is my slide visible? Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Atul Surveyor, Academic Coordinator for uh, Indian Academy of Sports Dentistry from Indian Dental Association. Everybody must be aware about the sports dentistry, but is sports dentistry is useful for your practice? Yes, transform your practice through a sports dentistry. Basically, just to know about what is sports dentistry, I'll just give you a uh, one-line statement. It is a branch of dentistry dealing with the prevention and treatment of pathologies and injuries of oral cavity and stomatogenic system related to the sports practice. So yeah, the dentist should be present at the, all the sports activity. Those are be happening in the field or maybe outside the field. There will be an injury which is happening on the field or maybe the patient is going to come to your clinic to treat their injuries. So yeah, for that, we have the new initiatives coming with the Indian Dental Association that is Sports Dental Center. So IDA invites you to transform your dental clinic as a sports dental center to educate and empower athletes. Ensure that every athlete, regardless of any sports, gets the oral health care they need. So these centers will provide you a healthy environment for the athlete to interact with the dental health specialties and uh, eliminate the athlete's oral health issues to raise their well-being. So basically, we have your clinic can be registered for the IDA head office. The athlete will support for the athlete's oral health counseling, uh, certification from IDA, uh, sports dental camps in the all the national federation, and also your clinic name will be flashed on IDA portal to know about all the federation, which is the nearest post dental center is available in their area. So what are the elements that will be going to cover up in this post dental center? One is the pre-competition dental assessment. Second is to advise, third is to treat and monitor. Basically, you have to do a pre-competition dental assessment in which you have to screen all the possible ways that can be a hindrance for the athlete in the time of the tournament. Then we have to advise them in terms of the treatment, in terms of the wearing the mouth guard, followed by the treatment. And after all that, coming after the tournament championship, you have to monitor is there any kind of injury had happened, which athlete might not know, but you have to monitor that, which will be suffering that athlete for the futuristic tournament. So all these things will be going to cover in your sports dental center. IDEA has initiated a sports dentistry fellowship program, which is going to get kick off from the January of 2024. So just see the last statement, which I would like to tell you, knowing is not enough, we must apply. Willing it is not enough, we must do, which is given by the famous martial art player, Jesse Bruce Lee. So just go to the website, sportsdentalcenter.org.in. Thank you very much, guys. Please stay tuned. Please stay updated with the ID head office. We're going to update you about the Sports Dental Center as well as the Sports Dentist Fellowship Program. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Atul. As we conclude this webinar, let us carry forward the insights gained today into our dental practices. Once again, a heartfelt thank you to Dr. Moes for sharing his wisdom and to all of you for being a part of this webinar. Looking forward to your presence at all our upcoming events and most importantly to you being a part of Digital Smile Center. Thank you. Yes.